So you got all this stuff with the girl and the freak off and all that. You got the car thing where you make a threat and to blow up somebody's car and that car does blow up. You got these gun charges out here. You got the shine thing with J-Lo and the nightclub and all this other stuff now. Now you're looking at a criminal enterprise. Because yeah, now if he's gone back in the houses, he's like, uh-oh, yeah, the, this shit's gone. If you were his attorney, and let's say that they really do have some stuff on him, what would you advise? Because to, to me, I'd be thinking run. He, it, here's why. Sean Combs, basically a, a music mogul right now. Like the guy in the hip hop world was just amazing. He did so many different things, bro. He, he took hip hop to levels that people didn't think you can do. Like he was making all kinds of deals. He, he he went from working under people to having his own record label. He had some of the hard, hottest artists ever, you know, Notorious B.I.G., Biggie, like well, that was his, his guy, a bunch of other artists. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge East Coast rapper, so don't get me the name in all of them, but you know, Sean was behind all that. They say he was more like a connector. He would bring people together and make albums. And he was a guy, he was an entertainer, like a dancer, wanted to be a rapper. So he did, would rap on a bunch of stuff. Right. Did, I was going to say, did he start as a rapper? Like, how did he start? Like Behind the scenes. Okay. Like I said, a connector. So from what I understand, you know, Sean Combs was a guy who could go out and make things happen. He knew people. He was, you know, interning and got the right mentorship and was able to move up and make get into like A&R, get into management, get into all sorts of stuff, got with the label. He learned the business inside and out. So he was that guy. He was the go-to guy to make stuff happen, man. We get this concert over here. We need this artist to talk to that artist. We need to get these people in. We need to get this writer over here. We need to get this producer over here. And they were making hits. He was doing great. And not only just with the music, once he really got going, he got into fashion, his own line of suits and like street clothes and then like tailored type of suits, like really high-end suits. He got into alcohol, you know what I mean? Like vodka and, and tequilas and stuff like that. He like he had his hand in everything. He's getting money, bro. It was just coming in. But you know, he was just known as this producer, you know what I mean, artist type thing. Working with the biggest names, um, you know, working with, you know, B.I.G. And of course, we know how that went. And, you know, he was still able to go forward and get more artists and come in. You know, like Sean was making it happen. Now, you've heard of Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. 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 So you, and you've heard of the casting couch and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah. He was he was taking Bro. it. He was making it. Bro. He was uh, he was. It was not a rumor with, yeah, with Weinstein. Yeah, yeah. It was, he was the worst absolutely. kept secret in Hollywood. Right. <laughs> the thing was, but the thing was. Well, where, he was crushing. He cru like, he crushed a bunch of, every time it starts to come out, he'd crush it. He'd crush a, an article. He crushed, like, he was able out. to pay him off. He was able to keep it. Yeah, NDAs, I'll blackball you. He's the biggest, biggest, he was putting out hit after hit after hit. Yeah. Allegedly, the way it went down is Weinstein was like, hey, bring the hot girl in, whoever she is, throw some scripts, pick whatever script you want. You'll be, you know what I mean? And I'll get you in that movie, uh, but you're going to have to do a little something for me. Right. You know what I mean? It's kind of one of those things like, you you know what I mean? And, you know, from what I understand, he kept his word. You know, it's, it's a lot of women that didn't say nothing to do that whole Me Too movement because they became A-listers because of that deal they made with this guy. And a lot of people who were making noise, it seems that they were making noise because they got the, he held up his end of the bargain, but they weren't good. They... They couldn't really do it. Like the job itself, they didn't really make it happen. They got their shot and it, it, they fumbled or whatever, and now they mad at him. All right, so the music business, far worse in my opinion with, with, with respect to that than the movie business. And the movie business, like Langston was bad. The music business, this is why they say that Russell Simmons left when Me Too hit and left to a country where it with no extradition with America. You know what I mean? Sean Combs was in that group where they're doing what they want to do with whoever they want to do it with. Right. And allegedly this has been going on for decades. I've heard the rumors. You know what I mean? I mess around in the, in the hip hop business and you hear the rumors and Sean Combs has all these parties and all these, you know, things and what's going on. And, you know, women started to come out here and there and say, yeah, I saw Sean with this girl. Uh, I saw Sean with this guy. I walked in on him and they was doing this. They were wearing that. And you have all these rumors about him being, you know, you know, roaming with it, let's say. He's like equal opportunity pleaser, right, whatever. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now this all comes to the forefront. He's recently settled a case with a former, with an ex-girlfriend. And I don't know how much it was. I think it was north of $30 million. Uh, she filed a case. Yeah, you can read. If you read the indictment, bro. Because well, it, it was civil. So if you read the complaint, I guess it wasn't indictment. If you read the complaint, which you can, it's online. I covered it on my on my platform. I like I needed to take a shower after I read about what was going on, what she alleged. 
And, you know, Sean Combs' camp paid her off immediately. That came out the next day, paid her off. Um, so now it seems that somehow the feds have gotten involved and they're looking at all of these allegations uh, stacked up against him. I mean, you got, you know, like the essay stuff, you know, with women and men or whatever. You got, you know, allegations of drug use. You got allegations of murder. You know, they're saying that Sean Combs may have paid money in the uh, in the assassination of uh, Tupac Shakur. You know, you got people talking about that. So all this has been, um, you know, kind of unwinding over the past, you know, 10 years or so. And now you have this, they, they, they hit his houses, they searched his homes, went in heavy. I don't know if you saw that on yeah, the yeah. news. No, yeah, of course. Went in heavy, you know, so you know, if the feds is on you, if feds got a case, you know what I mean? It's a problem. It ain't just smoke. There's got to be some fire there if the feds is coming in doing stuff, right? Because the feds don't lose. They ain't just picking up any old body's case. It's not state stuff. It's the feds stuff. So all of the rumors and all the speculation and now YouTube, all these people are coming out saying, yeah, Sean Combs may have did. Diddy did this. Diddy did that. Whatever, whatever. You know, the, the feds letting you know, like, hey, man, we watching you. They got him at the airport. Picked up his buddy, had a, a white guy with him. The white guy had on weed and, you know, some pills or whatever on him, some drugs. Took him away. You know, and it's like people are like, oh, man, he had a drug mule. Like, come on, man, ain't no drug mule. That's just the feds letting you know they watching you, bro. You, Hey, man, where you going? <laughs> you know what I mean? We see you like, we see that you gassing up the airplane. You plan on going anywhere, Sean Combs? You know what I mean? We got the manifest. You know, we got the flight plan. Oh, looks like you're trying to go down to the Bahamas. <laughs> Well, what? we think you should. You might want to stay in the country a little bit longer, right? That kind of thing. They're right. watching him. They're watching him close, and he's a little worried. But no much, indictment has come down, and no arrest to this point. Well, I was going to say, what about the uh, the drug mule? Like how how much? Like the guy that had the drugs on. What? How? What did he get charged with? He got charged with possession, controlled substance. Okay. I mean, it was like you know whatever marijuana he had. You know, what I mean, I don't even think he had like a ounce or anything oh, like okay. that. It was like so all was personal it? use or whatever. And I talked about that on my show. I'm like, look, bro, ain't no drug mule. Like, Sean Combs ain't tied up into nothing like that. You know what I mean? Like, the other stuff, yeah. So, allegedly what it is is Sean Combs would always have, allegedly, someone near him that would have his drugs of choice right. to just carry his stuff. You know, if it's pills, if it's marijuana, if it's powder, if it's whatever. So, you know, and this now it's all kind of allegations coming out. People saying, yeah, this is how it are working. There are other guys who have worked with him, producers, that have filed civil suits as well, trying to get a payday, right? So it just looks like Sean Combs um, is the center of this investigation, and it might, it might turn out to be a RICO situation where he is the criminal enterprise and is going to encompass a whole bunch of crimes going back a couple decades. You know, um, Sean Combs has caught multiple gun charges over the decades, you know what I mean? Like threatening people with weapons. Um, there was a shooting inside of a nightclub. Jennifer Lopez was with him. Uh, another rapper, this, this rapper named Shine. And as the story goes, allegedly Shine just took the case and said, yeah, I did the shooting. But they say it was really Sean Combs. It was in the club shooting at some dude. No one died, but people did get hit, allegedly. Um, there's another instance in California. Some dude was shot in the bathroom at one of their studio sessions or whatever. And uh, they say that maybe Sean has something to do with that. That's Diddy, y'all, has something to do with that. Um, just go anywhere, put in, type in Diddy's name, it all comes up. Um, so, he's, of course, he's worried. There are allegations that, you know, they're looking at his sons, that maybe his sons are involved. And then, you know, there's allegations of drugging people, underage women, transporting underage girls from state to state, city to city. Right, which is where the... The sex trafficking comes in. That's where the trafficking comes in. You know, um, there's people saying that, yeah, there's a certain type of drug that he liked that he could get in Miami. It's like a, like a, I don't know, some sort of pink ecstasy or some, I don't know, some some drug that I ain't never heard of. Right. That he would have people fly from Miami to L.A. because he's in the studios and he wants this drug or whatever. So you got that case. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, I don't even know how they do that, but if you're moving drugs from point A and you fly the country to point B... I mean, I don't know what they can charge trafficking. you for. Trafficking. It'll be trafficking, right? Mm -hmm. Conspiracy and, to traffic at whatever it is. So all this is going on with Sean Combs. And people are like, well, is he guilty? Is he not? You know, the court of public opinion has him guilty of sin. You know, rumors say, that, yeah, this is how he used to get down. But here you got this kid who worked himself up from nothing and they made himself a legit billionaire. And he's already on that, I'm the man, I'm the greatest ever. Whatever I want, I get 
you know what I mean, can't stop, won't stop, you got that attitude, couple that with a bunch of money and a lot of people that's going to empower you to do stuff, you know, that, that never ends well. Uh, how, how did, so how did all, how do you think all of this got got started like i mean was it what do you think it was the one initial civil case with the girl or do you think it's a it's been building or what i think it's the one civil case with the girl i think i think it's a combination of both i think law enforcement you know when they look at stuff and you got maybe some cold case files or you got some other cases yeah, out yeah, there and it's, it's always a detective that's like man look i don't know about this bro right we need to keep we need to keep our eye on this so i think you have that and then you have this woman who comes out with these allegations and then you can see the paperwork and it's like, see, I told you, let's talk to her. Let's see what she knows about this nightclub thing. Let's see what she knows about this gun thing. There's an allegation that, um, this girl was dating another artist, a rapper and, uh, Sean Combs threatened to blow the guy's car up. And then the guy's car blew up, right? That's out there. That's part of, that's part of her thing. If you're dealing with something like, all right, bro, we got the paperwork on this car explosion. What does she know? You know how they work. Yeah, I, I was going to say, though, like, typically, if it was me or you, um, the allegations alone would be worth it. Because they all they need to get is four people to sit on the, on the, um, sit in the uh, witness box. You know, they indict you, which is easy. Then they, you know, they indict you, they charge you, they arrest you, you get out on bond. You know, or or you probably well, I'm never getting, I'm not getting out right. of bond. Um, but let's say it was you or I. Not hard to indict you, not hard to charge you. You and I go to prison. You'd probably get on bond because you're an upstanding citizen. I don't. But and then you know whatever. Six months later, I go to trial. They just put four, three or four people on the stand to say this is what he did. He did this. He did that. They don't really need any real evidence to convict me. And in that case, if it was just four people. I'm not sure how much of a chance I would have. Maybe, maybe 80, maybe, maybe it's probably 80 to 90% chance I'd be found guilty, right? I, I, assuming that they don't, that the jury doesn't know anything about my history, right? right I was going to say, yeah, throw in the text messages or or, or voice recording. Right. That's, I was going to say, but actually, but evidence, you know, for a celebrity who can mount a defense like him, he that takes a lot more than four or five people saying this is what he did, you know, um, you know, circumstance and there being circumstantial evidence, then they're going to say, okay, well, how can you prove this? And they're going to be, if they go look and they show, here's the text, you know, here's a text um, chain. I said this, he said this, you know, boom, boom, boom. They're like, oh shit. Yeah, that sounds really bad. And then this one, and then here's a photo here. And then here's an email. Here's this. Talk to so-and-so, and then so-and-so corroborates that. And before you know it, you've got, okay, it's not just four people saying, yeah, this is what happened. We have no evidence. It's four people plus video, plus there's some uh, surveillance footage. When I said this, you see him run out of the thing. Well, that's what he why he ran out. You know, there's text messages. There's this. Uh, you put that together. God, he's, he, and, and, but he's got a lawyer, a, a really good lawyer. He's, it's, he's probably still screwed. So yeah, he probably said, I don't know what, what I'm wondering is, and what you, I don't know that anybody knows this yet, is like, what is the evidence to tie all this together other than a few people saying, he's a bad person, he made me do things. So-and-so brings in drugs for him. Like, okay, all of this is hearsay. Is, Not, is, it's admissible. But it's still hearsay. So one of the things that this woman, Cassie, who was, an artist under his label and was signed to, I think, a 10-year deal or something like that. And he was basically using her as his plaything. He allegedly would have her engage in group sex with paid male prostitutes. And he would film and he would watch and they, he he's would- paying her. So he's, he's paying, paying the- she, Okay. And paying her because she works for him. Right. So, But she's supposed to be his girlfriend- Sort of thing. I That's guess. almost like por- like you're just paying porn actors. Yes. So allegedly, these events were called freak offs. Bro, I'm surprised you have it. I, you, I, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you. Got to read the the complaint. If I wanted to read the complaint, I wouldn't have you here, bro. You need to read. But even after I leave, you need to read it. Like it's gonna blow your mind. Well, I mean, like, I heard there's like there's these extensive sex parties, and, and they would call the sex parties the freak offs, right. and then. Um, you know, like they would have lots of drugs, like, you know, like cocaine and pills and tons of alcohol, 
she would say, I don't even remember some of the stuff, but she would have to basically engage in intimacy with these men who were paid, right? And he would have her pay everyone and set the thing up and all this kind of stuff. And they would do it in, you know, penthouses and high-end hotels and stuff like that. So there may be evidence out there. Like, okay, maybe we got film of all these people going into the penthouse. Maybe we got film of how tore up the place was. They had to put it back together. You know, like, hey, we had to charge him extra money because the place was so messed up. Maybe, again, this is all just me speculating, maybe they got some of the men who were paid to do this, the male sex workers. She's already said she did it. Like, I, he gave me the money. I paid for this. I set this up. Uh, his other people on the staff set this up. There's allegations that he would be physically abusive towards her and would, you know, get her medical records and keep her away from the public eye and make sure she couldn't talk to anybody. You have all these allegations and, it, and it, allegedly they said that's why they paid her off so soon. But maybe the feds got information. Maybe the feds are talking to people. Maybe he filmed all this. Remember, he filmed all this allegedly. Maybe they got hold of some of this film. You mean like during the raids? Like during the raids, they would have to get a hold of- Or someone came forward and say, hey man, I got this. Well, I mean, God knows what they got during the raid. Like they they didn't raid his house just Two to say homes. To, well, they didn't raid his homes just to say, look what we can do. They they were going for something. Like looking they, for something. Right. So she probably was able to say, you know, I, I like I've heard different things. Like he had every single room was wired for audio and video, yes. right? And so and that a lot of the sex party or some of the sex parties happened. Sorry, the what are freak offs? Freak offs. Some of the freak offs. <laughs> yeah, I love that title. <laughs> at his homes. So, and that people, he would record people without them knowing. Like, that's a whole that's separate another, charge. Yeah, that's, that's another crime. So if, let's face it, if if I say this is happening over here, even if I don't have any evidence, but you raid my house to try and look for that evidence, you get other evidence that supports it, people are going to believe anything I said over here. Even if there's no, no evidence, they're going to be like, listen, if you did this. Of course he did that. Of course he did, even though we can't prove that. Plus, there's no way that she's saying all these things and that they based on who he is, that they don't, like, she said, this happened, this happened, and they're like, and, and they were to say to her, give us something. There's got to be some text, something. Something. Right. So if, if she said all that and there was no text, they're not going to move forward because he's, he can mount a defense. So there had to be enough for her, for them to, one, take it serious, two, get search warrants, because it's a big deal. Like, right. the, the, the feds know they're going to be under scrutiny if they raid the place and come up empty. It's a billionaire. You right. hit his L.A. and Miami mansions at the same time with all this equipment, all these weapons. The hit a spot in Star Island, man, they needed boats. It looked like a, a SEAL Team 6 that hit the joint. They had boats pulling up. They had stuff in the water. They were riding up. So you had helicopters all over the place. That costs a lot of money. And, you and know. They, they tipped off the cops, right? Because when there's yeah. like, helicopters and. You got to gotta have local guys involved. How many times. Do the feds take a case that they can't win? Oh, I mean, well, I mean, obviously, they never take one they don't think they can win. <laughs> right. But, I mean, the average is like 97% uh, conviction it, rate. It, conviction rate. But that includes pe people that have been indicted and pled guilty. Taking a deal. So w when you really think about it, so people usually, they'll... They'll that will carry over for people, and they'll say, "Well, if you go to trial, you have a ninety-seven percent." The truth is, if you go to trial, you actually have a better percentage, which is still you have what five or ten percent chance of winning if you go to trial. And and keep in mind that doesn't mean you win all. Like they'll call, count that some of that as a win if you were charged with ten counts and you were found not guilty on three of those counts, but That's still seven you were found guilty. They'll say th that three goes into the. That's part of the average. But the truth is, you're still going to prison. So people will say, well, look, three of three, you know, three of the 10 charges or 11 charges, they were found not guilty. So he did win. Yeah, you won three, but you're still doing 10 years or right. 20 or 30. Right. So that's usually what that means is they're like, okay. you have a 30% chance or you have a 10% chance of being found not guilty. No, no, you're probably still have a 98% chance of going to prison. I always say, look, if you're guilty, you got a 100% chance of being found guilty. If you're not guilty, you have about a 50% chance. Now you got to weigh out the offer versus what you could be facing. Yeah. That's when you get into that, okay, you can do five years or you might be doing 25 years if you don't win this case. If I'm so, one of the one of my biggest shorts I put out there is like, should, I'm like, should, should Sean Combs fight this case or take a deal? 
I mean, you, you got this kind of money. You're a billionaire. You look, you know what you did. Like you said, you know what you did. Yeah. You won't know what the feds have until discovery. But by that time, it's too late. You've already made up your mind, right? You're not going to get to see discovery before, you right. know, you get arrested and charged. And, you know, now you're Yeah, they, yeah they don't. They, he had no idea this was coming. He couldn't have had any idea. So he doesn't know what they have. So I was saying like, well, would I go to the would I go to the government and say, hey, we're gonna save you some money so we don't have to go through this, you don't have to fight us, you know, I got billions, I got a billion, y'all got billions. I'm willing to do five years in a camp or eight years or whatever it is. I'll pay restitution. Um, I'm cool with that. If we can make that into some sort of deal, should you do that and take the deal, or should you just use your money and resources and try to fight it? And but you know, but he still he doesn't know what he's fighting because there's no indictment. He can't see what he's being charged with. And if it's Rico, well, he at some point he's going to be able to see it. At some point. So at some point, you know, let's say three months from now, when they come to him, when they arrest him, you know, um, you know, and they'll just come arrest him. Like they're not going to call and tell him to turn yourself in. They'll probably just come arrest him because they made such a big deal about this raid. They're probably just going to grab him one day. Right. Yeah. So they'll grab him, throw him in. He'll probably be out right away unless they get. It, it depends. I mean, he's got his own plane. He's got this. He's going to have to put up a lot to get out because the feds don't like to let you out. But he's also super – here's the thing. He's – what weighs into it too is that he's super recognizable. It's so you're a nightmare. It's like where he can't – you know, that's the argument for the defense. Your Honor, he can't go anywhere. Where is he going? He, he's, he wouldn't make it a week on the run. So Plus, we don't want him inside. What if someone try to do something to him? We got to try to keep all the extra money we got to spend to try to keep him away from everybody. Well, in a way, though, he'd probably be better off inside. Not for safety, but at least this is going to sound horrible, but to get his head right, because well, sit down so you think, yeah, so he can really think like, hey, like right now, like initially when he gets grabbed, he's thinking, I can't do all this time; it's going to be horrible. But after two or three months, you start to, you know, your expectations of life drop dramatically. Initially, he can't. He gets the first two or three days, he can't conceive of having to spend 10 years in prison. Right. So even if you said three years in a camp, he'd say, no, I'm going to go to trial. You're guilty. No, we're going to win a trial. He doesn't, he's not thinking correctly, right? Like, you know, you're, you're, you're at this level. You're not even able to consider being at this level, even when you're sitting in that cell. But after a few months, he'll start to realize, like, I could... These guys are telling me that, that I'll go to a camp or I'll go to a low and it's not bad and I can read and I'll still be able to talk to people on the phone. And I'll get commissary. I'll be able to walk the track. I'll get in good shape. I can I can still work on things that I can do in the future. And that's that's reasonable. And and you know, if, if his lawyers are smart and not trying to bleed them dry, because they, they'll tell you stuff like, we can win this. We can yeah. you give me 50 million and we yeah. can win. Like lawyers are scumbags. Yeah. So, you know, some, they may be just looking at him thinking, hey, we can make $20 million on a defense. We'll lose. But it'll look good. We'll muddy the waters, and we'll make twenty million. And he'll lose in the in the end. He'll lose, and he'll get a bunch of time. And then how much you get on the appeal? Oh yeah. Oh man. And then, <laughs> then, then the appeal, which is funny because the appeal has even less chance of winning than the than the trial. And especially if you're guilty. But some of these guys, you know, their egos are so big that they can't conceive. Even though you clearly broke the law, they can't conceive that it would catch up with them. And that's dude. He's that guy. Well, then, then he's then he's going to go to trial, even though he can't conceive that he could end up in prison. And the, well, that's the worst possible situation is because most of the time, you, that guy does a lot of time. Because here's why. He's, first of all, these are, they're going to make it sound horrific, no matter what. Look, it doesn't matter if she was into it. Mm -hmm. They're going to make it sound her, and she's going to make you sound that this guy. And she's on the stand saying he did this and he did that, and it graphically yeah. describe what happened. Well, it was this one guy who had this thing that was like this big, and it was like the other guy, and then I was right there, and he was telling me to do this. Bro, I wouldn't want to sit through that. Like, yeah. oh. And here's the thing, too. In the end, so in the end, he ends up getting hit. He ends up getting found guilty of like sex trafficking. And keep in mind, too, the jury doesn't know what he's facing. Mm. When a jury is told all this, unless you're facing murder, I mean, I'm sorry, a death sentence, they have no idea what you're, the only time they let a jury know here is the potential um, uh, sentence is if it's the death penalty, because they have to have a specific tr trial set aside saying, can you, are you willing to sentence this man to death? So in that case, they're like, okay, I know he's facing death. That's it. Other than that, the jury may be thinking, like there'll be some jackass on the jury saying, 
Man, he's facing probation. Right. He ain't even, he's rich, he's this, he's not even gonna get probation. He Or he's not gonna do any jail time, he's gonna get probation. There's gonna be some jerk off saying that, not realizing, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people where after these people are found guilty and then three months later they're sentenced to 30 years and the jurors mm. are like, I had no idea he was, I thought he was gonna get four or five years. So if I'd known that, I right. never would, which is why we don't let you know that. So, so one, if he's found guilty, he's being found guilty of charges like sex trafficking, you know? Hey, or, or, and maybe you know, uh, uh, like murder for hire. Right. Possibly. Yeah. The, even if, even if they, they, they could, you know, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll talk about it and then they'll drop the charge because they didn't meet the burden of proof, but, but the still out jury there. heard it. Does the judge say I can instruct you to un unhear yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's but, gonna work. And here's the thing: now the judge is thinking you just got that dropped on a technicality, but I'm going to keep it in mind when I sentence you, because he can consider I forget what they call it something, you know, like a twelve factors, or they got some mm. name for the factors. Like I'm allowed as a judge to consider other factors in your sentencing, which allows them to go above the sentencing guidelines. But let's put that aside. The jury is going to the, the, the it's going to be like human trafficking, sex trafficking. It's going to be these hor horrific, you know, drug trafficking. All the, they're going to make him sound horrific. And let's face it, he's not Elizabeth Holmes. No, he's not. He's not. You know, he's not a thirty-two year old that can cry her eyes out and talk about how she's been taken advantage of. She, he's not a a, a blonde hair, blue eyed, um, upper middle class white woman. Yeah, he's you know? a well manicured black dude with a fur. Yeah, <laughs> he's with the fur. Did you there, see like, him sitting there in the thing with the? I told you not to wear the fur. Wear chinchilla. It. Yeah, <laughs> there's no chinchilla in prison. I promise you. But yeah, I, 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 I definitely would see unless they gave him some sweetheart deal where it was like probation. But they're not. They didn't do all this to give him probation. Can't do probation. No. I'm like, yo, give me Bernie, give me a Bernie Madoff's old room, bro. Let me hit that camp, play some tennis, walk the track, like you said, man. I, I'm cool with that, but. I'm not a guy that has that ego, like you're saying, and a billion yeah, but dollars. You've been in the military too. The, listen, you know how many guys are in the in the prison that have been in the military tell you like, yeah, this isn't that much different, you know. Yeah, although a, they don't yeah. get to go out and right, you know, jump out of planes and shit. Um, still. I got a buddy of mine who um, that I heard he was. I say buddy, he was in our unit. Right. Good soldier, really good soldier. I'm not gonna say his name, but this guy actually did a combat jump. He actually jumped into Panama. And um, which is cool if you're a paratrooper, if you got a gold star in the risers, like on your jump wings, like the risers are the, the lines that go from the parachute to you. Those are called risers. On your jump wings, if there's a gold star in those risers, that means you did a combat jump. You actually jumped into combat. So, so this, this is during uh, to when they uh, upended uh, uh, Noriega, Noriega, right? Yeah, so he was on that mission. He jumped in. Watch this. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. <laughs> he jumped in on that. And um. So to us, it was like, he walks on water, like, dude, got a gold star, like, dude, you know what I mean? So anyway, I hear decades later, they're like, yeah, man, you know, dude, locked up. Like, for what? Got into an MC, out there riding around, some dude in a truck was kind of like, I don't know, weaving or something. They thought he was trying to weave him off the road, him and his homeboys. They pull out a pistol, dump into the truck. And what it was is the guy's child was doing something. The guy was like trying to take care of the child. He was weaving around. He didn't realize that the, the motorcycle guys were out there, goes to get some gas. The MC dudes run up, pull out the thing, you know what I mean? Shoot up the car. I, from the way I understand, no one was hurt. But he shot up the car. And That's attempted. Child, yeah, there's at least two counts of attempted whatever. He's sitting down somewhere. So um, great soldier. Hardcore dude, you know what I mean? But you hear stories like that. It's like, yeah, it's not... <laughs> Yeah, the life, like the the structured life and all that, and all, we soldiers can adapt to almost any situation. So I can see soldiers being able, to, especially like combat guys, they can they can adjust to that, you know. But still, it's sad, you know. I mean, that's how that's how you, your story ends, bro. You know what I mean? Or even if you do, I don't know, thirty years in there, or whatever, twenty twenty five years, and then whatever he got, you, he was already in his forties. So you know, by the time you come home, man, it's over, bro. Like. Yeah, you just hate to hear that, man. That's a real American hero, bro. But yeah, but Sean Combs is not that. No, he's not. I was gonna say, Sean Combs is not, <laughs> Sean the Combs real is not that. Hero. So we're just gonna see how this plays out. I mean, the story that Sean Combs has something to do with it, with you know, with uh, uh, Tupac getting murdered. Um, there's a, there's a gangster, L.A. gangster, lifelong gangster called Keefy D. 
Mm. He got arrested. Re- like he went on Vlad and yes. spilled a bunch of shit and wrote a book and wrote thought a book. he was good. They said like when Vlad was to people, I've seen people talk about this. They say Keefe D got confused because he had been, he had talked to law enforcement before and they made him king for a day kind of thing or is it queen for whatever that? Queen for a day. Queen yeah. for a day. Queen for a day and he was telling everything. Okay. He thought he was immune. Oh, no. Not on a murder charge. They'll never give you an immunity on a murder charge. So he goes on Vlad all these years later and he talks about it. He's like, what do y'all mean? They come show up. You know what I mean? What you talking about? Nah, man, we, I'm good, right? Nevada wants to talk to you, bro. Clark County or whatever wants to talk to you. And the same two guys who were working on murder from the very beginning. All right, man. Now tell it. Now we know. Now we can tell you to this. We can tell you to that. Da, 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 da. Everyone in the car that did the shooting that night is gone except for Keefe D. Right. So it's easy for him to say, well, no, I didn't do that. It was him, him, and him, and all those dudes are gone. And the story is that Sean Combs paid a million dollars. He said, hey, I'll put a million dollars on this. And when it happened, allegedly there's some phone calls made where, you know, Sean Combs is saying, was that us? And paid the money out to a New York gangster. And, you know, that's where it gets all blurry and convoluted and I don't know what or whatever, but that's allegedly what's being said. So that's the tie to the Tupac thing. And... What do the feds have on that? What did Keefe D say? And like you said, when you know you send down, bro, hey, people looking at stuff like that, they pretty much do anything, say anything, right, to get some love off them, off them numbers. You you looking at football numbers, bro? Like, you know what I'm saying? Lineman numbers, you looking at 60 something years? Like, bro, what do y'all want to know? Right. <laughs> you know? We knock that down, bro. So we'll see how that plays out. But you have all these scattered cases and all these things. That's going on over the decades. Um, and it was it was Myron Gaines from Fresh and Fit who has his own show because Myron is a former um, uh, a federal investigator, with, um, Homeland Security, HSI. He broke it down and he was like, yeah, they're going to try to make this a RICO. And they're going to say that Sean Combs is a criminal enterprise. And so you got all this stuff with the girl and the freak off and all that. You got the car thing where you make a threat and to blow up somebody's car and that car does blow up. You got these gun charges out here where, you know, you, they showed you love in New York, brandishing a firearm, firearm and all that. They, they mark it down to misdemeanors or whatever. You got the Shine thing with J-Lo in the nightclub and they say that, you know, Shine took the case and did the time and said he did it for X amount of money. If they, you know, like they, they love to track money. You know right. that. They find it, okay, you did, in fact, pay money to get to him. Well, what was this money for? And then, you know, the drug stuff, like flying your favorite drugs from this city, and all this other stuff. Now, now you're looking at a criminal enterprise. Well, plus uh, plus, what about the um, the Tupac thing? And that. Yeah, if you could tie him to that. If they could tie him to that. If they're going to tie him to everything you could tie him to, now statutes of limitations don't mean anything because it's a RICO, right? Now they can go back and look at that because it's a criminal enterprise. Right. And that's what scared me. I didn't realize. I'm like, what? That's the workaround around a statute of limitation? Well, they tied to a RICO, it was the enterprise, and we could do this, this, and this. That's scary. So I, I had a, a guy that, and this is a good example of, of that, is that I, had a, I knew a guy that was running a tax scam. And so he did it in, I don't know what years it was. Let's say it was 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, uh, 2004, and then he stopped. And like four years went by. So with the statute of limitations is like three years, right? So he's money. Right. So he's good. He then um, he then did it like in 2000 and whatever, 2000, you know, whatever, eight, nine. Um, and then a buddy of his, he showed a buddy of his how to do it. He did it. It was off muscle? Uh, off the muscle. <laughs> uh, he did it, it with, with his buddy and his buddy got caught. Ooh. His buddy was just a, a complete idiot. Like, I mean, he's like one of these guys that walks in the bank and is like, I, I need 100000 in cash. You know, that kind of stuff. They're like, well, what are you doing? Like, so they were like, oh, okay. Here you go. Right. <laughs> so, you know, what, a week later, three days later, they actually give him like a cash or something. It creates a, you know, cash transaction report and a, and a suspicious activity report. And he actually took the money. He went and he bought like a an like a $100,000 RV or something. Like, he just spent the money in really stupid ways that, that, raised red flags. And so when the feds come in and grab him, he immediately says, this guy's done it multiple times. He's been doing it for over 10, 12, 10, 11 years. He taught me how to do it. Now, what's interesting about that is they charged him with two years. 
So out of six, they charged him with two because he stopped for three years. So the statute of limitations, like it didn't connect. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? If you're doing this on a constant thing, but you had a break and that break broke. So because he could have been charged with the whole thing, even though think about it, if it's a 10 year run and you have a statute of limitations of three years, you go, okay, well then you could only go back three years. No. No, it's the same continuing crime. Right. So we go back all, all the way, day one. But he had a break. A good break, like a look, a, a real good, legit right, break. Right. So he stopped for like four years. So they said, okay, these we can't charge you with. These we these two years we can. Plus, of course, they tie him in with his his, his idiot buddy. So that's the whole thing. But you know, like you said, but the the Rico thing, it just sounds to me like one crime is leading to another crime. Like there's a whole connection between all of them. So he's not gonna get away with saying it was 15 years ago or 25 years ago. Well, yeah, you've right. been doing this for forever. Forever. So like in, like in your example, you got old boy who had to break. But then let's say he's, he's he did something with the stupid dude, but the stupid dude and him were both working under me and I'm doing something else. I'm, you know, I'm out here doing all this other. You could tie it all together. Tie it with, all together. With, with Rico. And the Rico brings all of that in there. Like, right. Well, that's because y'all are now part of right. an enterprise. Right. It was just, even though they're all completely different crimes too. Yeah, but it's still it's still an, it's still a, a criminal enterprise. We're still doing we're doing multiple crimes. Hey, when they make the pyramid, you in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> and that's my cell phone. They well, they got you on the pyramid. Is your name on the pyramid? Is somebody at the top and then it filters all the way down? You in trouble, bro. And, and one, of course, they don't need that much evidence. But the fact that they raided his they raided his house because they definitely felt there was stuff there. So God knows what they found there, and they're gonna put everything. Listen, I, I knew a guy one time. I think I've mentioned I've mentioned this before too. So. They're a, the government's alleging that, you know, he's, I forget how many million, if it was 20 million or 30, whatever, it's 30, let's say a $30 million scam, right, that he's running. They spent a day just showing the jury, he, he's on the stand, asking him, what was this check for? And he'd mm. look at it and they, he'd go, I mean, I, I, I took a few people out, we spent, he's like, well, what is it? We spent $1,200, you know. For dinner, okay. What's this check for? He's like, I mean, that's when I bought my Bentley. It was it was eight hundred thousand dollars. Oh, okay. What's this? He said all day, all day. He said, can you? The jury hated his guts, right? By by the time they were done, and the fact is, is that spending money isn't, you know, that's not legal. That, that huh? Like spending, it's money. not. Yeah, it's not illegal. I mean, I just was spending money. Like I was just buying stuff. Like some of just he's like the fact that you're spending twelve hundred dollars on this, eight hundred thousand on this, two million dollars on your house, four hundred thousand on this. You know, um, twenty thousand dollars on a vacation. You know, these people couldn't get themselves out of jury duty. Like they, you know, that they're they're pissed. They're there, and they and they hate your guts. Like even if they thought, you know what, I don't think he did anything illegal. They're still pro- they're still thinking, fuck this rich dude. Hey, here's our chance. Yeah. <laughs> here's our right. chance. We could put one away, you know, and and yeah, man, that So th- I'm saying they'll they'll twist things in a way that make the jury hate your guts and not think you're and then plus all the people that are gonna get on the stand and just say, he did this, he did this, he did this. It's crazy, man. And I do have experience with with court, um, because in our field, air traffic control, when something goes wrong. The lawyers come. Right. Especially if there's loss of life. You know, if there's loss of life, man, you, you're looking at, it could be decades of litigation. The thing that happened with Kobe, man, that's going to be in the courts forever. And whenever it comes up, it's going to, we got to have controllers come in. They're going to talk to all the controllers that, took, that may have talked to that helicopter, um, which, which is, you know, you know, fun facts. I was sitting in the tower and that, you know, Kobe and his helicopter came flying through our airspace that day. The last... Air traffic control facility that they saw out the window was ours. You know, the last one that they talked to were the guys in San Diego, like the radar guys, but then that was right before they crashed. But they came flying through, and I'm sitting there. And I've never, in my 20 years plus experience in the FAA, seen a reaction from the government like I saw when Kobe's helicopter went down and those people lost their lives. They came, and they came fast. They came from everywhere, and they talked to all of us. It's like, why are you talking to us? Like, it's, there's nothing to talk about. Well, it was a day. What were you doing? Whatever position you were working in the tower, like in the air traffic control world, there are multiple positions in the towers, different people doing different things, and everything's recorded, and every, you know, there's paperwork for everything. I'm doing the, the least important job. I'm up there. You can literally just sit, have your feet kicked up. You ain't doing nothing. And- they talked to me for hours. Just me telling them nothing happened. 
Like mm-hmm. this, I you know, it's like you said, uh, well, what did you do? Uh, you know, at two hours and 15 minutes and 38 seconds, what were you doing? Uh, I was still sitting in the same seat that I told you I was sitting in. Uh, did you type any, did you do any inputs on any of your uh, systems? No. Uh, what was the weather? I don't know. Check the weather report. Like, did you do the weather at the proper time? Yes. You know what I mean? What was the weather? I don't recall. You got to be careful. Can't say I didn't know. I don't recall because you say you didn't know. Now they got you. All that, just, just we, if we can find that these guys are at fault, that means the government is at fault. That means we're going to get more money. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I sitting there where they holding up each check, that has to be painful. I've 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 been sitting in, in um like depositions and they're like, you know, we're looking at the radar display and we're going second by second, literally, bro. Second by second by second. And you know, they're just trying to break you. They're just mm-hmm. trying to get you to just get flustered, say something crazy, and now we can say, see, see, this this controller, this his fault, he wasn't blah, blah, blah. I hate the court system, man. When it, when you when you get into that, but it's just people getting paid out. Yeah, I was gonna say if 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 uh, in in Diddy's case, he's gonna have some problems because they're gonna come up with so much. You know, like I said, like just like even if it's irrelevant, they'll they'll make it feel relevant. You 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 heard like you ever seen? Well, if you ever watch court TV where they'll ask the same question like five different ways, five different ways. and the thing is, is people. Well, well, they're they're trying one. They're probably trying to get a certain response. But secondly, by asking it five different ways, the jury starts to think it starts to make you look guilty of something. Right. Like he's asked it five different times. He obviously knows something. He has something. Yeah. Why does he keep asking that? Right. And you're saying and trying to get you to sound like you're like you're covering something or stumbling over something or rewording the, your answer, which makes you sound less credible. Yeah, you don't want to sound too robotic, but then you don't want to sound too loose, and then you don't want you don't want to sound too coached. You don't want it to sound rehearsed. It's like, bro, I didn't do anything. Like I did my job that day, and the airplane fell out the sky. Sorry, the mechanic messed up. There's so many cases where like the mechanic messed up and they know it, but the mechanic didn't have insurance. There's no money. All right, he didn't work for a corporation. He was just an independent contractor, or whatever. And he's there's no money. They got all the insurance money, so we can show that the FAA did something. Air traffic did something. Well, the FAA got a lot of money. All right. You know what I mean? Or we could show that Cessna, he was flying in a Cessna aircraft. Well, we could show that Cessna messed up. It wasn't the mechanic, it was Cessna. Cessna made a mistake and they they broke this or they broke that. Now we could get Cessna to pay us a bunch of money because that's like Ford in the aviation, but Cessna's huge. Right. So that's what they that's what they, like you said, they're going there asking the same thing over and over and over again in different ways. Man, I don't like that world at all. Like what you said about attorneys, and I have attorneys in my family. I love them to death, but <laughs> like that world mm. I even got a cousin Who's a judge now I love I love what she's doing It's, it's kind of To see one of my cousins Is actually a, a judge Sitting on a bench It's like wow That's kind of cool But at the same time She sees stuff She's like yeah This is crazy But um, yeah Sean Combs got a problem bro Um, I would Like if you were his attorney And let's say that They really do have Some stuff on him What would you advise? I mean I, I And you're trying I, not to make money Like you're not trying to you're Yeah not yeah to I try and take a Take some kind of plea you know, you got to take some kind of plea. Like if the, look, if they come back and they're like, oh, 45 years. Okay, well, then then they've already made their mind up that they want to go to trial. Yeah. So then you just have to try and, and not really argue that he's innocent, but argue the, um, you know, the seriousness of the crime and make mm-hmm. everybody look as, you know, uncredible as possible. Because some stuff, it's like, look, you're, you've got video and you can hear him talking and you can hear that like... There's nothing you can do about this. So you're going to have to basically spin it in a way that makes it seem like everybody was a participant, everybody was being paid, everybody was happy to be there. It's not exactly, it's not the crime that they're alleging, you know, like it, it's hard. You have to try to mitigate that that role. As best you can. As best you can. Bro, I mean, and then I'm, I'm sitting here now just thinking about, it. I was thinking about when you were saying that your friends at the time put those cell phones next to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> right. Which, like you said, it probably wasn't the phones, but whatever. They were wired for a fact. What if they had people around Sean Combs wearing wires? Oh, yeah. If, he's, if, he's, if they've been doing this for a while and they've got him on something, I mean, yeah, he's, he, yeah, I mean, if I was him, <laughs> Jesus. Let me, get, let me get Bernie Madoff's old room. Give me a camp, bro. How much, get me down to, can you get me to five years? I could do 60 months. I mean, honestly, like if I, if you were 
if you were him and you knew, like they raided here, because now if he's gone back in the houses, he's like, you know what they got? Uh oh, yeah, the, the shit's gone. Like yeah. they got the. They hey, got where's the, that one memory stick? Gone. Yeah, they got all this <laughs> stuff. Like to me, I would be thinking the problem with a guy like that is he doesn't do a lot of stuff by himself. Like he, he's incapable of. You know, most people at that level or are, are that level are incapable of of actually doing much of anything somebody else takes care of everything they, they, they right. yell out they bark out orders but they don't really know how they come true so so if he it's not like he can say i'm gonna have to get a fake passport because if he does he's got to call that's, none of that's gonna happen bro. yeah he's got to call three people next thing you know four people know he's being gouged i mean he can't move any money they're Ooh. watching his bank account everything like running to because to me i'd be thinking run here's why do I have about a 90% chance of being found? Yeah, but guess what? I'm doing the rest of my life in prison anyway. Anyway, so let me get to this non-extradition yeah. country. Let me start pulling cash out. Let me see how much I can get out of here if I can get if I can disappear and maybe get somewhere where I can get some pla some multiple plastic surgeries to into some country where they're not going to recognize nah, me. They are they're going to recognize you just by the country. Let me just, let me let me go to Venezuela. Let me go to Russia. Let me go somewhere where I can just buy myself protection. Right, but he could. But if he were to go somewhere, have money, and basically go be a farm worker for two years, and get a few plastic surgeries, grow his hair out, he might have a chance in the in the jungle somewhere cutting down sugar cane. You ain't gonna want to do that. He ain't gonna live that. Life. He doesn't. I'm just saying. He ain't gonna get just, no blisters. We're bro. spitballing. <laughs> they got, I would say, okay, if you're gonna run, you got to run to a country that's gonna protect you. Um, like when Trump was. His last year in office, I'm like, bro, Trump is. I just tell my buddy, I'm like, man, I think Trump's gonna run. I think, I think they're gonna announce a trip to Russia or Ukraine or somebody's before the war. Run. And I was like, and he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna just dip out on his Secret Service detail. He's gonna slip out and be in Russia because he knows, like, he knows what he and, did. And what happened? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Listen, so, I got my, I got a buddy who said the same thing. They're gonna indict him. Susie's out. They're gonna be. I'm like, he's not gonna be indicted. Okay. Then he had all these reasons why and nothing. Nothing. I think you know, it's like with someone like Trump and Diddy is they're the same dude, except Trump was raised in that world and Diddy worked his way into that world, but they got the same mentality. You can't touch me. Right now, what Trump did, the only reason it's a problem is because people can't stand him. Half the country can't stand him and they just don't like the way he does. But Diddy might have been involved with all sorts of stuff. Like you talking about the Tupac thing. We already know the freak off thing. Um, you know. God forbid, what, what, how, how is they moving his money? What if they get, they're looking at this stuff and they find like, hey, what's up with this money? What's, what are these transactions? What's this? Where's this money going? Where, where's the taxes on that? Like, you know, who knows? Yeah, they're going to get him on something. But, but where, where does he go? If he took off, where, where does he go? You go to Venezuela because that country is like a failed state. Go to Argentina, same thing. It's kind of like a failed state. But how you have you, your how, own security. That, America's going to come, come get you like that. How does he? I think they would. But how, how does he move his money? He doesn't. Crypto. You start moving your stuff and you just, you start slowly I think, I moving your money slowly over. Slowly nothing. They're watching his bank. As soon as they start moving his money, they're going to be like, shut that down. Like, I know what's happening here. I mean, you, you look at the jewelry, you look at all this, you start selling that stuff, you put all that stuff into crypto. Not that I'm a crypto guy. I'm just Not like, even crypto. He, if, if he just could get away, get out with a bag of jewelry, he could probably do oh. Okay, in those companies, countries. just to watch, you got like eight RMs, you got a bunch of Rolexes. Who's buying them in those countries? Like you sell, you, you have your people sell them in other countries, bring the money back. There's still gonna be people who are gonna be loyal to you, right? He's moving like a kingpin. Nobody's gonna be loyal to him. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> he's, I take some of these watches and bring some of your money back. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna rob you all the way. You know, what I mean, I go sell these watches, get three million, bring you two million back. Uh, I'm keeping a million for my trouble. That's you're, <laughs> you know you're very mean? trusting. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm good for it. I'm good for it, motherfucker. <laughs> done. That dude's done. You hear what they charge? But you with? might have family who rock with you. Everyone does have family, even though I mean, I got family I know I could trust. But I mean, a few, I know I got at least three humans. It's three, five humans on this planet. I know. I know I can trust, but I'm not. I wasn't moving the way Sean was moving. So you got that too. You got you made a lot of enemies. I think that I think that most most drug dealers when they come, and they think they got. A, they, by the way, every, when you talk to these, they got a bunch of they, all they. This dude, they can tell you how good they were to everybody, and as soon as they were locked up and it, they, their people knew they weren't getting out, they'd go in and rob them, yeah. take everything they got, take their woman too, yeah, everything. So it's like, 
So, and I think at the level he's at, I think it's the same thing, especially the charges. They're thinking he's done. Mm -hmm. Not just that, he's done. Not only is he done, he's been indicted. So-and-so has been indicted. So-and-so has been indicted. So-and-so I'm lucky I didn't get indicted. I'm going to take everything I can and I'm going to try and, and, and leave right now. And so I don't know. Anybody that's close enough with him that he could trust has probably been indicted. I wonder if Sean Combs has Swiss accounts that's just been set up over the decades. You would think knowing the kind of stuff he's into, he would he would be smart enough to put some money away. Got some I gold didn't. over there. Well, yeah. yeah. But you weren't at his level either. You would think if you had got to a billion dollars... Uh, if I've been, it, look, you know, I think you just get so cocky, you think you're untouchable, and mm. you don't even think about putting anything away because you think I'm untouchable. Listen, what's going to happen? Worst, co- worst case scenario, they file a lawsuit and I pay them off, bro. I'm untouchable. Damn, I don't have to worry about that. Oh, you know how many t- lawsuits I paid off? How many chicks? How many gag orders? How many? Pff, man, I got, I got this. I'm not worried. And then one day, boom! By the time it it comes down. It's too late. Yeah, assets, they seize all your assets. Now you can't move. Once you don't have any money, you throw- so Even if they haven't seized anything, they'll just watch them. The bank will watch them for them. Think about it. All of a sudden, they're like, they're like, oh, well, to me, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't. I'd leave it all and just watch it. Oh, great. They just He just moved money offshore. Nice. Like, you know, it's almost perfect. Like, we'll probably get the money back. And it's not our money anyway. We don't care. But now that's one more nail in his coffee, coffin. And when we grab him, we can say, Your Honor, no, you can't let him out of, uh, out on bond. He's, he just moved 250000 here, $1.5 million here. They've been pulling cash out of the bank. Like, it's completely uncharacteristic of his account activity. He's moving his stuff overseas. You let him out. We'll never see him again. Man, I hope Puffy's not watching this. He's going to be frustrated, bro. So- if you had to make up a number of percentage, what percentage would you put on him being indicted and arrested? I mean, I'd say a 90% chance that they arrest him. I mean, they indict him, of course. They indict him. They arrest him. Me, personally, I would let him back out on bond, you know? Um, I mean, if I was—I mean, they're going to put up a fight, but I think the judge would say— He's too recognizable. Like yeah. the judge was probably- Forfeit, yeah, surrender your passport. Yeah, yeah. Put, we're going to put, put up a couple pieces of the property, the passport, a couple million, whatever. Because they're going to think this is going to be the 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 um uh, you know the trial of the century. And then- it Will be. Yeah. And then, then of course, he's got to go to trial. And then that'll take- So it, it, he won't go to trial for another, for two years. Yeah. And when he does go to trial, and he, of course, wants to get out on bond, obviously. Um because he's older than me. I'm 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 53. I think he's like 56, 50, something like that, 55, 56. Mm. So, I mean, anything over 15 years, bro, that's life. No, because he'll get, well, it depends on what the charge is. But assuming, honestly, the way it's set up right now, he could get 20 years and be out in 12. If he gets 15 years, he could be out in like- I should have to do a percentage. Yeah, it's, it's, you have to do uh, 85%. Mm. But the first, the um, um, oh gosh, it's is I want to say first chance. It is first chance, right? First no, chance first chance act. Yeah, mm-hmm. first chance act. I'm gonna say first chance. Somebody's gonna correct me, but it, the first chance act was signed into law by Trump, and uh, you. So now, as long as you're programming with certain to certain programs, you can work. You're not working off your time. You're working off more halfway house. But really, it's time mm-hmm. because what happens is now suddenly you're el- for 20 years. Now you're eligible for five years halfway house or let's say so on 20 years you do. Let's say you're going to do um, 17 years on 20 and then you get five years halfway house. So you end up doing 12 years. But when you go to halfway house, you think, oh, five years in a halfway house. No, no. As soon as you go to the halfway house, they put an ankle monitor on you and they you send you home. home. You can go work. So you just have to abide by whatever your probation officer says, and you say, yeah, I work 40 hours a week here. I got to go be able to go to the gym. I have to be able to go shop. I want to go to church. I want to be able to go, do, you know, so as long as you can val- verify what you do, and after a few years, they'll take it off you completely and say, we're just going to monitor you. So, so hell, it don't he sound do, that bad. He could do 12 years, depending on what the charge is. Like some, there are some, like if it's, you know, like the- Human trafficking, like that, well, right now. Thing, the Pac thing could be twenty five years of life, right? There. Oh yeah, no, no. If it's it, he's never getting out, right? Well, right. It, you know, or if it's murder, the problem is, I think he can still get it with murder. Like it, it's only stuff like if it's like, like 
photos of kids, if you know what I mean. Right, like, right. You know, like those, right. Then, then, then you're not supposed to be eligible. Um, well, and you're not eligible. Well, that would be minors, right? Yeah, but so, these are not minors, right? Is that it? We don't know. There might be some people who are under 18. Oh, okay. And if he took video of it, then yeah, he'll get that charge. And that is the one of the easiest charges to, all you have to do is have possession of it. Did you have pos- possession of this video? Was it in your house? Yes. But I never, you're guilty. You have possession of it. We found it in your house. You're done. I had to have that talk with my daughter. I have a teen, you know, a preteen daughter, teenage daughter. And I had to tell her, I'm like, listen, we, we had to talk about online stuff. And I'm like, listen, don't let anyone talk you into, hey, take a, you know, hey, why don't you take your shirt off and take a picture? I'm like, you realize if you did something like that with my phone and the police came in and took my phone and found you having pictures of you with no clothes on on my phone, I go to jail. And she just looked, I'm like, listen, <laughs> it's so hard to be a parent these days because you got to keep these kids, you know, aware of what's going on so they don't get everyone else jacked up. You know, because you don't know what kids are doing. And yeah. it's like, don't do that. If anyone's asking you to do that, come tell me. And you have to have a relationship with your child where they feel comfortable enough to come yeah. talk to Most you. Most of them just won't want to, they don't want to tell yeah, you. But, and it's, that's, bro, could you imagine you got a son or a daughter and they, they take a nude on your phone? Hey, dad, can I use your phone for a second? Yeah, go ahead. They take a nude on your phone, send it to some girl or whatever, and it's, it's on your phone. Give it back uh, to you. Just listen. I'm, I'll tell you two nightmare scenarios right now. Not for for you, but for just the, your daughter. Mm-hmm. There was a bunch of girls who were um, had a slumber party. 13, 14 years old. They're trying on different uh, uh, bras and stuff. You know, they're little girls, um, little training bras or whatever, taking pictures of each other, right? Because they're all little friends. And at one point, one of the girls, um, years later, girls get angry, send out the pictures to a bunch of people. The naked, naked pictures to a bunch of boys to embarrass their friend or whatever because mm-hmm. they got mad at each other. Right, something you and I would do. Something, something a girl, something a guy, something a young child who's just a, a jerk off would do. Right. Yeah, stupid kid stuff. Right, stupid kid stuff. Well, guess what? Um, one of the parents gets it. They get upset. They contact the local police. They say, "Well, it went over the internet. That's federal." They go to the FBI. FBI. They get, end up uh, going and grabbing the girl on a criminal complaint. They tell her she has to register as a sex offender at thirteen. Uh, no, by that point, I think she was older. Maybe she was 17 or 18. But it does. She's it, an it's, adult, though. But it's yeah. Distribution of. Ch- oh, my. So, so you got to walk on, knock on doors and say, hey, my name is Amy, and I got to tell you I live in a neighborhood. Right. Well, I think, I think in that case, I think it's, I, I think the federal one, you basically, I think you just have to send out the flyers and you have to register. That's the thing. You're registering for the rest of her life. That's it. You're done. So here's the other thing. Uh, the other thing, I, there was a guy we used to call. Uh, Colby's heard this, uh, Harry Potter. Because he looked like Harry Potter, bro. Um, and he used to play ping pong all the time at Coleman, right? He, he got like five, seven, seven years or five. I forget what he did, five years, whatever it was. An amazing ping pong player, by the way, um, which is irrelevant to what we're talking about. Still really good. Probably, of course, he's also playing eight hours a day. Right, that's all he's I mean, doing. Bra, 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 <laughs> like Harry means. Potter, yeah, like, like a magician. Um, <laughs> like Forrest Gump. Yeah, and he looked like Harry Potter. So... Um, Harry Potter had dated a girl, and I'm sure I'm going to get the, the times wrong. He's 15, 16 years old, dated this girl. They dated for, for a long time, like years, right? Then suddenly he's 18 years old. I think he might have been 18 or 19. I think they were pr- both over 18. Uh, he finds out that she slept with his best friend or a friend. That never happens. He's very upset about it. But keep in mind, they've been sleeping together since they're 15. They've been, you know, I'm sure it was off again, on again. Yeah. But he's taken videos of them having sex. She's taken videos of them having sex, right? But they were, they were teenagers. Now he's 19. He gets upset. He starts shooting the videos out to her friends and stuff. They, somebody gets the video. They call the local cops. They say this is distribution of they contact the FBI. He gets grabbed. They tell him he's got a, he's, they're going to give him, they were going to give him something like probation, but you have to register. Absolutely not. He goes to trial. He loses. He ends up getting like five or 10 years. And so he spends five or six years at Coleman playing ping pong. With that charge? Think about it. With that charge, playing, playing ping pong. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. What did he do that you and I wouldn't have done if given that technology? Right. Most kids would get angry and send that, and they they did not have the criminal intent. His intent was not to distribute. He wasn't thinking that. He was just being an asshole. He was thinking revenge and right. all that other kind of stuff. So, uh, so that's why when I think, you know, 
your 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 kids. And listen, you know, I don't want to name any names, but 15, 16, 17 year olds will have sex and they will video parts of take pictures of themselves, doing things to each other, everything. Keep those. They're on your phone. Well, you've got on your phone. Right. And they don't think of it like that, but that's what it is. And you get some jackass US attorney and he'll charge you with it. And he won't, by the way, he won't. You you go to him and you try and reason with him. He doesn't give a it's shit. He's being tough on crime, bro. He's gonna get that's he's a sure end he, for that sentence. See, he sleeps like a baby, having taken that horrific eighteen year old off the street, who has some photos of his when he was fifteen and sixteen years old ha, uh, having his girlfriend blow him. And meanwhile, his buddy who is supplying him all the money and Cloudy needs to get into Congress is doing all sorts of unspeakable things to little kids. Some 40-something-year-old man is doing all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? How you doing, Matt Gates? I'm just saying. Stuff out there. Right. <laughs> right? So just what, stuff out there, bro. Is it Epstein Island? Man. There's all kinds of stuff going oh, on. Oh, man. So, nah, bro. So the whole Sean Combs thing, bro, <laughs> I'm with you on that. I, I think that, um, I mean, he's already guilty in the court of public opinion. Who? Sean Combs. Oh, okay. Yeah, I already yeah. guess oh, yeah. in, in a I thought you were talking about Epstein. Oh, and he's got low. Did you, you 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 saw what the first deal he got was, right? The sweetheart deal he got yeah, first. Yeah. It's 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 un absolutely undefensible. But it makes what? sense. He had he had dirt on everybody. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah don't touch dude. And I mean, so, and so did he did he really did he self-delete? Did he end himself? Was that well <laughs> how did he uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, the Where were the CEOs, bro? The the problem, you know, and, and everybody that says that kind of stuff, like the problem is having been in those institutions, I just don't know how it's possible. I understand all the conspiracies and I get and it's it's obviously extremely suspect. <laughs> And I and I hear you. If you did, if you if you hadn't been in those institutions, then you know, like it, the only thing that makes sense to me is like somebody goes to his roommate and says and gets then the roommate kills him. Like that makes sense. But the idea that all these other things makes it, look half the cameras don't work. You know, two officers sleeping on the duty. No, overworked. Yeah, exactly. So you know those types of things or a uh, um. A black bag group guys coming in to the prison, killing him, and then leave. Like, come on, stop it! You, there's so many cam. Even the half that don't work, you're going to get caught on camera. Like that yeah. didn't happen. So, is it possible? I guess it's. I, I find it very unlikely. Yeah, but it, I love to talk about it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds. I love the idea of. Of. I don't know what possible. happened, but it was very convenient, bro. It, right. Like it it solves a lot of problems dirt. for a lot of people. This guy's got so much dirt on so many people, and he just disappears. And they say that all of his his cameras and all of his footage was gone as well. No one knows where that went. It wasn't there. To, but law enforcement said it wasn't here when we came to do the uh, sweep, when we came to you know, search the home. Oh, it's not there? Then where is it? And who's on it? I mean, you got everyone. Like, you got the royal, the royal family shaking in their boots. You know what I mean? You got all these, you know, big time celebrities over here in America shaking in their boots. And all of a sudden he decides to end it all. That's it. You know what I mean? A guy that's selfish ain't trying to. No, no, because I, I, listen, like narcissists don't kill themselves. No, they don't. Do, do you know how many people I'm going to take out before I take myself out? I'm going to, I'll never, I, I, like, the idea of killing myself. I mean, I've, I've, I'm not saying I haven't thought about it, but I just don't think I would ever go through with it. I think it's more like a thought exercise in general. Like it was more like I'm faking this. How can I? <laughs> you know well, what I mean? I, I have bouts of depression, but I've never gotten to the point where I've actually really like done it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the idea that this guy, like you know, you have that those moments of depression for an hour or two, and you maybe you're thinking about it, but it's it, I'm never it was never gonna. I don't think I'd ever do it. And that guy, plus he had, you know, like it. He had a trial. He had appeals. He had. There were multiple avenues at his disposal. Right. That's what bothers me more so than the cameras and everything else is that you would do it. You know, like I don't. Get. He's, he still had cards to play. Right. Like, I, like I'm waiting until everything's played out if I were to ever consider it. Yeah, he had cards to play, bro. So that whole thing is like you said. That's suspects. You that's know, what I mean? whole, yeah. I just don't have a definitive answer. That's what's horrible. Yeah. And then uh, speaking of slang, so with all this Sean Combs thing, if 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 I were to say, hey man, yeah, just put it over there and put it inside, no diddy, 
Right. Is what you got to say now. Yeah. You say something that sounds, you got to say no Diddy. <laughs> I'm just, that's how it works, man. If it's something that sounds a little Roman, a little suspect, hey, no Diddy. Is that like the, uh, that? that's what she said? That's not, no Diddy? But yeah, because the kids were saying pause. They would say something that sounds kind of suspect. You're, yeah, you're a good looking guy. No Diddy. No Diddy. All right, okay. Before it was pause. See, now I'm putting you on game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> In prison when you say, nah, man, Cox, you're a good looking guy. No homo. Same like, thing. That's yeah. Of yeah. that of that vein. So all it went from it went from no homo to pause and now it's no diddy. So uh it was I like the no diddy. I'll be using that heavy on my platform, bro. But I'll say some stuff and it's like every chance I get no diddy. One of my buddies who's like, I don't even care about this world, but he's like, Oh yeah, he said it to me. No diddy. I'm like, bro, he's like, Hey man, I'm still out here. I know what's up. So uh yeah, yeah, that's that that whole thing with Sean Combs. <sighs> what do you I, think? I think he's guilty of sin, but what can you prove? Right. That's the thing. I think he's guilty of sin. Um, yeah, I, I'm certain he did at least 85% of the stuff that they accused him of. Certain <laughs> if of the they did, If they did 85%, do you think he's guilty? Or do you think that he's just a, a weirdo and he's paying people to to have sex? Or, you, or is it just you're saying what you read, it was just too over the... It, it's, it's Everything I read, I believed. When I read that complaint filed by that his former artist, I like everything in here, like, I believe him doing all this stuff. I've heard stories from other people in the business from, for years about, you know, stories about the Sean Combs parties, uh, about, you know, there's a... <laughs> I don't know if this is true or not. This, this I don't believe. But allegedly, they used to get together, Sean Combs and a bunch of guys would get together and play naked basketball, full-court basketball, like Jay-Z was there or whatever. I, I don't believe that. But I believe there's a weirdness going on. Um and it's all to, you know, I'm the greatest. I'm the man. You can't touch me. I can do whatever I want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it, it, if, if I could do whatever whatever I want, I wouldn't pay, play naked uh, basketball. Facts. I, uh, I, you know, like. <laughs> not even thinking about that. Naked basketball. I mean, like, there's like, bro. if I could do everything I want, like, I, I wouldn't do half the stuff that you I've heard. But that's, you know. We're different people, though. You know what I mean? You, did you... Um, Speaking of entourage, which I, we were talking about earlier, um, did you ever see the episode where Turtle and Drama have sex with the same girl? I and, see that. And and like so, like the next day, Turtle sitting there, like he happens to be leaning, and like he rub, nudges up against Drama. And Drama's like, "Stop! What, what are you doing? Get so get so close to me!" And now they're they're acting weird. Weird. Like, Calm down. So at some point, um, E and um, I want to say uh, Vince. They're like, all right, what is y'all's problem? What's going on? And they're like, nothing, nothing, nothing. Don't worry. Don't. And so finally, Turtle says, let's just, he said, we we had sex with whatever the girl's name is, Terry or Kim or whatever. You know, we had sex with her last night. He's like, both of y'all? He's like, yeah, it was a threesome. He said, and at one point, our swords crossed. No diddy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, ooh. So he's like, he goes, it's an occupational hazard. It's going to happen. He's like, but you know, he's freaked out about it. He's like, get off me. Get away from me. And he's like, walk away. That's hilarious. <laughs> the, the term swords crossed had me laughing so hard. Like, how does that even happen? Like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> man, it's swords crossed. No, he didn't. Listen, listen, that sparked a conversation with my wife. And she's like, have you ever? I was like, no. And she's mm. like, well, have you ever? Been in a situation where like you were with the girl, and there was another guy who said no in the room. Like he's not saying he's a part. I said no, and she, she was like, "There's a war, uh, one sword minimum in this room." <laughs> yeah, I said, "Listen, if there was another guy even in the room watching, looking, I said, then it's nothing's happening, nothing." And she's like, "Never." And I'm like, "No, stop it!" <laughs> so I'm a freaking stop. Dog. I'm starting to feel like drama. Like, stop it, stop it. Yeah, man, that's that's no. You answered that correctly. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, no, no, baby, no, uh, uh-uh, uh, nope. We're gonna stop this conversation now. I get my one veto a year. I'm gonna use it right well, here. You, well, you know what she was saying? She was like, she's like, she's like, I mean, like, you know, you know, they say like guys after they've been locked up a long time. I'm like, no, never. That's exactly where I was going. Yeah, I'm like, I've heard that. No, and she's like, you know, because I heard like after ten years, I said, no, 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 don't, 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 don't. <laughs> So you have to change. You can't say no, Never. Diddy. You would have to tell her no, broke back. No broke no back. No broke back mountain. Yeah. <laughs> no broke back. No. Yo. Nothing wrong with that for you boys and girls who are into no, that. I'm, I'm just no, saying. I'm, so, I'm not judging. I'm just saying no. No. No broke back. At but, no point did I say, God, I never noticed the curve of Jimmy's back. Yeah, that just yeah, never we just, happened. We just went too far, man. Let's go ahead. I'm starting to get nervous, man. I don't know. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm liking this, man. This is going too far. 
<laughs> I think Diddy's gonna bounce out the closet any any time now. Like, hey, what was that you were saying about me? No, Diddy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, man. How, how this, was, this, this was how amazing, bro. Uh, hour forty. No, are you serious? This one? Yeah. So it'll probably be uh, a three hour and then an hour and twenty. So you got enough for your two? Cool. Yeah. 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 Let's wrap this up. Yeah, man. Let's wrap this up, man. We're wrapping it. Wrap yeah. it up. Yep. And I would. Uh, I use this outro for both episodes. So, okay. Um, link. You want a link to your, your YouTube channel? Yeah, I do that. I, yeah. I, I, you know, DL Saint. I really want to know podcast. Yeah, I just put that in there. Yep. I'll say that. And um, yeah, Instagram is the same thing. I really want to know podcast on Instagram. Um, we'll yes. Do a little outro, and we'll fill those links in the description. This was fun, man. And uh, you know, if you ever need me to come back, let me know, man. If you got any questions about. Aviation or anything like that. You're gonna hear some more stories about aviation, by the way. What on on uh, um, like about air Boeing traffic stuff? Well, not just Boeing, just in general, just air oh. traffic control. Uh, air traffic controllers are retiring like left and right, and there's nobody's filling their place. No, no, and it's the government's fault. It's a long story. That's another hour and a half if we were to get into it. But basically, the FAA was accustomed to controllers staying until you kicked them out. Like we can work until age 56. Mm-hmm. And everyone worked until age 56. That was that generation. They just kept working, kept working. And our generation came along. I'm like, well, hold on, hold on. You're going to pay me not to come to work? All right, I'm out. 50. Age 50. And then you got other people like, how's it going? It's great. Water's fine. They're out. Then you got young kids who are the millennials who are working. Make it, they made two, dollars $300,000. They put it all away because they were living with mom and dad. $400,000, right? Overtime and all that. Resign. Mm. I'm about to travel the world. I'm out. They quit. I'm, you know, they can go travel the world and get a job with a foreign ATC entity or work for a private company. If they run out of money, they can go back and do that. And so the the, the FAA is looking at a, pro, a staffing problem that they've never had to deal with ever. And in the government, the best don't go to the top, right? You know what rises to the top. So you have people who don't know how to manage dealing with a crisis that the agency has never seen before. And of course, they haven't made it better. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, like, in, in the BOP, like... The people that are a problem, what what they do to get rid of them is they give them because they can't fire them, and they can't even make them take a lateral position. The only way to get them rid of them in the institution is to say, "Hey, we can make you a case manager. Right now, you're a counselor. We can make you. A, we're going to make you a case manager, but you have to go to this institution. Promote so you they, out of here. They get rid. And so what happens is they just keep rising and rising. So the more incompetent. You are the quicker you move up the chain. Same thing happened. And the FAA's problem began in the eighties when the the union was called PACO back then. They went on strike. You probably remember this when you were younger. Yeah, yeah. The air traffic controllers went on strike. Ronald Reagan Ron fired, fired them, everybody, and they never fixed that. So you know, I work with guys who got fired by Ronald Reagan, hired by Bill Clinton into the same facility they got fired out of with the guy who replaced them. So I had worked with a dude, Vietnam vet guy. He was like, "Yeah, we had another guy who." Cross the picket line. So every single day, for like first two years of 1998, he come in, where's the scab at? Hey, scab. You want, you want the people like, oh, that's so toxic. Well, that word didn't exist back then. You know what I mean? It was still men were still men. So it was just like, hey, scab. And then the, the guy was like, well, you know, you see my new Mercedes outside. Thanks, buddy. You know what I mean? Thanks for not crossing the line, buddy. So these two were going at it every single day. You know what I mean? I can't stand you, scab, blah, blah. I'm like, bro. You just got hired back. You about to get fired again, man. You, you might even catch a case. But they never really buried the hatchet, but they hated each other, man. They couldn't work together. Like, we had to keep these dudes separate. Man, it was crazy, bro. So they never, the FAA never fixed. They never solved for that problem. Um, that huge gap was like a generational gap in air traffic controllers. They never hired enough to get them back. So now they're hiring like crazy. And they're trying to get people through, but it's tough. And you got kids who aren't as smart. So, you know, they, they hire 100 controllers. I don't know, maybe 50 of them get through, 40 of them get through, you know, and they can't, you know, they got to wait. Next year, we'll hire some more. Let's hire 150. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Because training is expensive. That's the and, most expensive and part. time consuming. Yeah. It could take seven years to make an air traffic controller. That's after they get through the basic training stuff and get to the facility. It could depend on where you're working. It could take three years. Lightning speed at some of these facilities is three years of training with an experienced air traffic controller. So if I went somewhere like Miami with my experience from Van Nuys, it might take me a year, just uh, not even, it probably take me six, seven months to get through their training program to work the tower. Mm-hmm. But the average controller coming up probably take them two years to do the same thing. 
You know what I mean? And then you get to the bigger, more complex facilities, you know, an experienced controller could go in there and it take them three years to get through that procedure, to, to, through that training program. And everywhere you go, you got to train again. So every, it's like every facility is like its own separate thing. So you have to pass their training facility, their, their training program. And then you get people like, I don't like it here. I don't like Miami. Um, I'm almost done training. You know what? I'm going to pull myself out of training. I don't like it here, which means they can go back to where they came or go to a different facility, another part of the country that they like, start the training process over again. Right. The FA doesn't know what to do. Like, what do we do here? Like, we don't, you know, like you get people who are happy in the small facilities making $100,000 chilling in some small Ponuk town somewhere. Hey, we want you to go to Chicago or here, work your ass off for maybe 5% more money, 10% more money, uh, no time off, only what you're guaranteed by the contract, and a headache every single day. You want to you take that offer? No, nah, I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> when I'm doing what I want to do when I want to do it, get right. my time off, have fun, coach my kids, little league team. The FA's got a problem. So you, you're really going to see um, this in the news more and more as we move forward. Just right. shortages in air traffic controllers across the country. Please do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button, the bell, so you get notified of videos just like this. Also, we're going to leave all of Saints, um, his links in the description. There's a YouTube and an Instagram. Please check them out. Please go and subscribe. Do me a favor. Share the videos. Check out my Patreon. Uh, leave me a comment. All of that stuff. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you. See ya.